Okay, so this is a course I've been wanting to do for a while. A course on PIC microcontrollers, electronics and programming. You know, though this course is centered around the PIC microcontroller, specifically the PIC 16 microcontroller, um, what I want to do is teach electronic concepts and programming along with this. Now, people would say that 8-bit microcontrollers are obsolete and that only 32-bit um, MCUs currently have a place in the market, etc., etc. This is not true at all. Depending on what you're doing, sometimes a 8-bit microcontroller is all you need. You see, if you're just getting started with microcontrollers, or even if it's a seasoned engineer in a hurry, you could count on the simple architecture of 8-bit microcontrollers to get you started. Now, 8-bit microcontrollers are far easier to design boards for. They are more resilient, they're less susceptible to noise, and 8-bitters usually run on 5 volts, which probably have a little bit to do with this resilience. Um, you know, with PIC microcontrollers, just like with everything else in life, it's all about the application. So the question becomes, when will you choose a PIC microcontroller? Well, a good rule of thumb I like to use is that if your application could get by with less than 40 um, input-output pins, I/O pins, and you don't need a you know LCD like a fancy touchscreen LCD or something like that, then a microcontroller, a PIC, a bit microcontroller is probably a good fit. So there are a lot of exceptions to this rule. If all you're doing is toggling I/O, then probably could use a hundred pin 8 bitter and be fine with it. Whatever the reason for until learn about the PIC controller, I assure you that this is the course you're going to want to take. Also there is a series on the Sony microcontrollers, so you can check it out if you like. One thing I want to mention is that you should probably try to start from simulations as much as possible for entry this course. Um, so for people who use Proteus and simulation software, um, it, there's a place for that, but what you'll find is that a lot of these simulation programs don't really mirror what circuits do in real life. So, if if that's all you have and you don't have access to physical devices, that's fine. But for the most part, I'd say avoid them. Okay, so I saw you enough, let's begin. The thing you're going to want to do with a PIC uh, microcontroller is set up the actual device. Unlike ARM devices and stuff, PIC microcontrollers can do pretty well with just a breadboard setup. If you're operating at 100 or so megahertz, that, which seems out average is this, you really want to avoid breadboarding. However, for applications, we usually stay around 16 megahertz, which is fine in a breadboard environment. Generally, once you stay below 20 megahertz in practice, I found that everything works well. So let's set up our breadboard. The first thing you're going to need for working with PIC microcontrollers is a programmer. There are a lot of um, programmers on the market, the ICD. 4 ICD3, Picket 4, Picket 3, um, etc. But the Picket 3 works really well. You get an original Picket 3 because the bootleg wants to operate properly, optimally all the time. So when you look at the Picket 3, we'll see that there are six pinouts. And these pins are the M clear pin, the um, VDD or power pin, the VSS or ground pin. There's also a program data line, um, PGD, and a program clock line, PGC. Um, there's also a, a PGM pin, we saw low voltage programming, but we'll stay away from that pin for now. Now what you want to do is you want to look at the diagram of a PIC microcontroller, and you want to connect the picket tree so that the pins match those with the pin out of the device that you're using. In this course, we'll use a member of the pic 16 f one xxx family, but the code should be should be similar and work across um, a multitude of PIC16 F1 family of devices. Now, the important is to make sure to follow on this course that the device has at least like one K of RAM, and any PIC that was used within or made within the last five to ten years will work and should be able to follow along um, nicely. You also want to have a good power supply for a PIC, something like a wall wart you know the DC adapter will work but you probably want to invest in a um, linear power supply you don't need you know a fancy digital one a simple one with analog um, turn buttons will work thus we need something that will provide reliable 5 volts for um, circuits um, I also recommend you use a breadboard base linear regulator in case your um, in case your power supply fails 
I have had instances, not, not much, but I have had instances where the power supply failed. And when the power supply failed, I was not able to um, continue my project because, you know, the failed power supply took down the entire board with it. And also, when it, well, sometimes if you have a circuit connected and you switch on the power supply, some of the more cheaper ones you might get a sudden inrush of current and that can cause some, um, some damage. You're trying to avoid smoking picks. You also... Um, so, what you want to do after we set up our microcontroller is you want to connect an LED through a current res limited resistor to pin D1. And with that, you'll have completed the bill. Now, take a look at the schematic that I'm showing you understand this happening. We just have an LED connected to the microcontroller through a resistor. So, once you set up a device on the breadboard, you're everything connected. What you want to do is open up the MPLAB X IDE software. When you are creating a new project, you want to select the category and the project type and the type in your device. For the X8 compiler, I use version 1.38. And depending on your device, you may have to use a newer compiler. Um, since Microchip acquired Atmel, there have been some changes with the newer compiler versions and sometimes older code doesn't work. Now I have a ton of um, commercial code bases that I maintain so I try not to upgrade to a new version of the compiler unless I absolutely need to like if I'm changing the family devices or I'm upgrading the product and I really can't squeeze it onto the current um, a current member of the family or something like that but once you're done with that um, all you want to do is add a project name and you'll be able to get the project running now usually you'll want to create the source and the header files for your project. However, what I found over the years is you try your best to get a project that's already running, a microcontroller um, project that's close to the family device that you are using, and you work from there. So check my comments and you'll get a project that you can use to help you get started with almost any PIC16F 1x66 family of devices. So once you have a project up and running, you just click the big green um, run main project button and okay get your microcontroller blinking now that's good but what's happening here let's look at it at our program to find what's going on now if we took a look at our blinking LED program what you should see is we have an include file and this include file contains all our configuration settings which is things we use to set the microcontroller for it to operate properly we also see an init main function. Now what this function does is it allows us to set up our microcontroller. If you come from an Arduino background, you may recognize this as the setup function for the microcontroller. We will also see that there is an internal 16 function. Um, now that calls code that allows the microcontroller to use its internal oscillator to run at 16 MHz. The tri-state or the tri-state register is used to study microcontroller pin D0 as an output pin. You'll also see we have our main function. With any main function, this is where the microcontroller starts to execute code. We call out in it main function and with any while loop, which keeps our program running forever, we toggle the LED using the port latch register associated with the pin, what we call the latch register. Now we also call a delay function. This delay function allows a microcontroller to wait a specified period of time by essentially doing nothing more than clock cycles by waiting 500 milliseconds before toggling the latch register with the LED connected to it as it blinks it will blink around a 50% um, duty cycle rate we'll talk more about duty cycles and clock cycles in later sections in the tutorial series um, and in later videos we'll discuss these, these, these details so that's it for now guys, thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel.